please introduce yourself and tell me, um, yeah. Who I am? Well, yes. uh, my name is David. I'm originally from Denmark, but I've been living in Sweden for the last uh, six years almost. Been playing Quake since the beginning. Um, as most of the players still around, we always uh, we, we started in the beginning like 1996, 1997 on local net cafes. So I've been playing pretty much uh, steady since uh, the beginning. Had a couple of uh, breaks like one year here and there, but uh, played pretty much all the time. And uh, since like 2000, I've been playing top level Quake 4 and 4, Team Deathmatch. Okay, so, so in Division 1. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, um, how long do you play and... No, how often do you play, I'm sorry. Um, it varies. Uh, throughout the last couple of, uh, like, six or seven years, we've had summer break. Every time it's summer, then the scene goes in hibernation, so we don't play that much there. And when the winter comes, then we play a lot. Um, so depending on how interesting the one uh, the the four and four scene is in Division One, then we play a lot, like uh, three four hours uh, a day, five days a week, depends on on what's going on. So some periods I don't play anything at all. Sometimes I play a lot. Um, I play poker for a living, so I have a lot of freedom when I want to work, when I want to play. So in periods I don't play any quake at all. In periods I play a lot. So, what's your favorite map and what's your favorite uh, weapon and why? Well, my favorite map is uh, DM6 one-on-one. -on -one. I've just played it so much and uh, I was always very good at it and I thought it's, uh, it's a really nice map. Um, DM4 I always got crushed, so it wasn't that fun to play and it was a really hard map. I thought DM6 had a little more tactical aspect to it and DM2 was always a sneaky map where you had to it was like very low scores and if you were behind from the start you had to chase the other guy for the next eight minutes. I didn't think that was so fun. Uh, but DM6 has shaft, it has uh, nice tricks and uh, it's a really fun map to dominate. So that's definitely my favorite map. For 4 and 4 though, it's um, it changed over the years. Uh, the standard map is always uh, DM3. Everybody has that as their favorite map. But uh, I've grown to change over the years my favorite maps. For a while it was DM2 which I hated in the beginning, and then it turned to E1 and M2. So, and they, there are so different maps, different game styles, but I, yeah, I've grown to love uh, each map in a different way, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And what is your favorite weapon? Oh, my favorite weapon? Um, well, I guess it's Shaft. It's always been, and uh, I was a very good Shafter uh, many years ago, but uh, it seems like people surpassed me once everybody got you know, 1,000 hertz on the mouse and 120 hertz on the screen, but I was pretty good when uh, when we still were using old PS2 mouse and old screens and stuff. Um, but I didn't improve that much on my shaft once we got all the equipment. I kind of stayed steady, so I got surpassed there, but it's still my favorite weapon to use, so. so. Okay. Ah, change the... So, do, are you doing a lot of um, interviews or so? Because no, it never. Seems like you are very. <laughs> well, uh, I did some like online interviews. We have a radio show. Mm -hmm. I do with uh, Phil, so we do some interviews there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what what me personally interests me is, uh, um, could you give an explanation to someone who never played Quickwood? What is the quad? The quad damage. Wha the quad what does damage. It? What is it, uh, and why is it so important? Uh, the quad damage, which is made of a symbol of Quake, the Q, it's a, a bonus you can pick up, and when you have it, you do quadruple damage, thereby the name quad. And uh, the weapons in Quake will already so powerful. Rocket launcher and shaft gives the shaft, for example, gives 30 damage per cell, 10 cells per uh, second. 300 damage if you get 100%, that's already pretty powerful. If you times that with four, it's like insane. So once you get the quad, it enables you to totally destroy a whole team by yourself. You can just cut through anybody like butter and you know body parts are flying around and you can really dominate a map, uh, which is hard to do in a lot of other games where it's uh, like <clears throat> war simulation games, it's uh, you know sniper shots or even Quake 3. 
the quad isn't near as powerful as it is in Quake One. So, yeah, the quad is a special item in uh, in Quake, and it's it what it's what's make the it makes the game explode, especially in four and four. Then you get these explosive waves of action, and it's uh, yeah, it's great. Okay, then the same please with pentagram protection. The pentagram. Uh, yeah, when you get it, you get 30 seconds of uh, Sorry, so immunity. Sorry, you start this question with the pentagram is because my questions are not included in the... Okay. Um, the pentagram as the quad is also a bonus power up you can get. Lasts for 30 seconds, but instead of giving more damage, you get invulnerability, so you can't die. So, of course, the perfect combo is the quad and the penta, then you don't have to worry about killing yourself, and you can just go on a rampage. Uh, and you can, of course, discharge yourself in the water as well, where you won't die. Um, so Penta Quad is a, is a favorable combination on DM3 where you can rocket jump with the quad, which is pretty hard if you don't have the Penta. That's uh, yeah, that's an advantage there. Um, the DM3 is the only map where we actually use Pentagram because it's the only 4-on-4 four four map uh, that has it. And we don't use power-ups in 1-on-1. Um, and there's no 2-on-2 two two maps that contain Pentagram. So I guess that's part of the appeal of people playing so much DM3 that it has all the power-ups. Um, then please, um, uh, there is some specially, uh, special special about Quake World. It's uh, Discharge and the Pentagram of Protection. I've seen any other uh, first-person shooter where you have really protection from all shots, 30 seconds long. That's something completely uh, new. And the Discharge ability. Could you please um, uh, include this one in a, in, a, in a sentence to say Quake World is something special because there exists these uh, two yeah. um, things? Um. Another thing I liked about the shaft is the discharge ability, where if you're in the water and you fire off your lightning gun, we all know that uh, water transport electric electricity. So if anybody around you is in the water, they're going to get electrocuted. Now, a funny bug, I don't know if it's a bug or what it is, but if you can see an enemy in the water and he discharges you, you're going to die. Like if you're standing on the bridge looking down, you're going to die, which is kind of counterintuitive, because why would you get electrocuted on the bridge? But uh, much as uh, speed jump has been a bug that has been incorporated in the game and taken advantage of as a feature, it's the same with the, the, the discharging. So now it's about uh, finding the right angles and uh, it's, become a, it's become a tool on DM3 when you're the underdog and getting dominated. You can discharge the enemy quad as soon as he peeks out, you know. So it's a fun little mouse and cat game where the quad, you know, he's peeking out, he can't you know, go too far out on the bridge, it's going to get discharged. It's just a fun feature that I don't know from any other FPS games. It gives it an extra, you yeah, know, an extra spice. Cool. cool. Thank you. Um, so this game is quite old uh, um, in comparison to Battlefield 3 or so. Um, what makes it so special for you to play it and always come back? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I've never left it. I've always uh, I've always tried um, a few other games, but uh, Quakewell is just the purest form of FPS game in my opinion, and it's lasted so long. Um, but it's not just because it's still the best FPS game; it's also because it has a special place for me. Um, not just because of the game, but because of the community. So it has a lot of history, um, and even people in the community today you've known from a lot of years back. And it really does add something to the game that you have this history and this development uh, of the game styles and the players and uh, tournaments and relationships like you gather friends and in the game. So, um, And the game itself has developed. I mean, we've developed several game mo modes for, for Quakeworld, uh, both one-on-one -on -one and, uh, yeah, well, mostly one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and we have abandoned some other game modes like Capture the Flag and Team Fortress, which has been adopted by newer games, um, but we haven't really gone back to that. That was more of a, a thing in the American scene. Um, in Europe, it's more pure one-on-one, four-on-fourteen deathmatch. Um, but it's still the most, it's the fastest game in my opinion. It's the most hardcore FPS, and it has the steepest learning curve, but it does give you the equal amount of reward once you master the game, and that's just great. It's not so easy to learn, but once you learn it, you know, you really want to stick with it because you, you gain something. It's not just one of those new games. You try, you learn it, and then you just toss it away and get a new one. Okay. So do you have any um, advice advices for newcomers? So um, they, can, they stick at the game or just 
Well, we have tried to do some initiatives, uh, like we have an uh, ignition tournament hosted by Akavator, which targets the n uh, new players so they won't get crushed, because there's um, quite a big skill gap even between totally new players and players who've been playing for a year. You know, I mean, the new player is going to get crushed, and it's hard because all new games today try to help the newbie on a, I mean, on a such a big level. They give them tips and you know uh, handicaps to the enemies and just try and make it so easy as possible for the newbie to try and, and, and get them to stick around. And uh, Quake World is just so unforgiving if you're bad. So I mean, you you will get crushed a couple of times, especially against little bit of pr better players. But uh, um, we have a channel on IRC called uh, QW Rookie where you can find other rookie players and then try and play against other rookies and. Join the forum, post if you got any problems. Uh, one of the big things about Quakewell is that it's so customizable. You can change anything um, which a game like Counter-Strike or Call of Duty doesn't permit. So here it really gives an option to let your artistic self come out and uh, make the Quake world look like whatever you want. So that's a big, uh, big plus. Cool. Um, just a moment. Yeah. What do you think, in your opinion, um, needs the scene to grow, or and what's the biggest problem? In your opinion? Uh, well, many people has declared Quake World dead for many years, uh, and we've persisted. But there comes a point where you have a critical mass, and when you uh, surpass that threshold, you just don't have enough players to run tournaments or have a continuous gaming outside tournaments. And uh, I think we're approaching that soon, so there has to be done something. But if you look at the statistics, we've had a steady decline in players. And it is really hard to get new players because of all the marketing from new games. They just push, push through console gaming and uh, gaming magazines and so forth. So uh, even though Quakewell has a place in most FPS gamers' hearts, the, most of them have moved on and it's hard to get them back. Um, but we could do something to consolidate uh, some of the few other communities still left, like Warsaw, CPMA, Promote, Quake Live. There's still a couple of players there in all the scenes, and if we could try and uh, capture those players to Quake World, I think that would be a good boost. Um, and in general, try and unite the Quake World community a little more. Um, let's say you have, for every 100 player, you have one player that wants to contribute. So if you have a 5,000 players, then you have a you know you have like a hundred uh, people that want to contribute to the c community. But if you only have 500 players left, you only have five people doing all the stuff, and uh, you know that also gets a critical mass where it's hard for them to do all the workload. And um, the players left, they don't really care about doing the community work. They stay as long as there's action, and if the action dies out, they're gonna leave. So it's up to us to keep it going. So we do what we can to to keep it attractive, like this land, for example, keep it alive. Yeah. So can you tell me um, something about uh, your most remarkable moment in Quake World? Um, well, it's probably a recent moment last year when we beat TVS on uh, the last Kewitz land. Kind of a, yeah. Um, yeah, that was probably the best moment, I think. Can you describe it a bit? Mm, well, there has there's always been rivalry with, between my clan Slaggers and uh, other top clans, and the the recent rivalry with TVS was especially intense, and uh, they had been dominating the scene for quite a while. So this was like the the big clash of the titans, where we got uh, everybody on land and nobody had any excuses, and they got the best players on their team, and uh, and we actually used the stand-in, but. Uh, uh, and Carl is a really good player, so we, we really clicked with him, so it wasn't a problem for us to play good. But I was surprised how good we really played, um, and I was just so happy to win it. And it was an intense game, because uh, this Kewitz land is coupled with Hazard land, and they needed the auditorium for some prize ceremony of their own, so they had to cut the 4-4 four four tournament in the middle, and we had to wait like an hour, so... You know, time goes on, and always at Kewitz Land, it's like uh, when we play the 4-4 four four finals, it's like 3 in the morning or 4 in the morning, and it was the same here. Here it was like 5 in the morning, and we've already played four maps, and and as usual, uh, the the great big games, they always end up with the 3-2 and like the last frag, and you know, you win with four frags on the last map, so 
it's always epic. So it was a uh, it was yeah, it was really fun. Cool. Um <laughs> just a moment. Um I um yeah. Uh what what me interests me is um you s you you covered really almost everything which yeah. is which is great. <laughs> um, you almost uh, you, you don't need to an uh, yes. ask any question because you uh, uh, covered everything. Uh, what uh, what I try to make in my mo uh, show my movie, as I said before, is to show people that there is a game outside which uh, don't have the best graphics, uh, but um, there is a whole a big player base which care about their game, and um, there are three maps uh, which will be played since uh, 1996. Yeah. Team them. Team and uh, when I id Software created the, those maps, they didn't even know there existed a, 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 that someone invented a rocket jump or a <laughs> money hop. Yeah. yeah, true. And then those, uh, then those um, um, new um, uh, features uh, came in, and even that, th those uh, maps was, um, was, was compatible. Comp yeah, compatible with that. Compatible. But there was a really interesting interview with uh, Romero, I think, who worked on maps for id Software. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, when he started designing the maps, he was looking at uh, uh, gothic buildings and goth church and stuff to inspire him to make these maps. Okay. And they just pumped out these maps, and but they had no idea about a rocket jump or speed jump or anything. But uh, and his favorite map was actually DM4, so that's kind of fun that it's been lasted for so long. Yeah. Okay, so your question was: Is there anything left for Quake World? Yes. Is there anything new we can conquer with our game? Um, well, it's hard to say. Back when Quake World was at its peak online, we got Quake 2 coming, we got Quake 3, and uh, Intel uh, sponsored it pretty heavily for tournaments and tried to make it an eSport game. And then we got Counter-Strike, which really took off. But Quake World were kind of left behind because hardware pr uh, producers were, or manufacturers were pushing the new hardware, so we got kind of left behind. Um, but Quake World is still a great competitive game, so there is options for us to conquer new eSport ventures and try and adopt some formats that other games are using like uh, Counter-Strike or StarCraft and we can um, try and get a little more involved in DreamHack, do a little better uh, live streaming, casting, interviews, more content that people are familiar with today, a little more interactive and uh, media-wise. So, yeah, there are options for Quake World to move beyond what we have today, but it requires a lot of work from community people. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay. okay. Um, any shout-outs or thankful words you want to say um, to the community or anything else? Well, thanks to Murdoch and Zero for sticking with Slackers for such a long time, and they came all the way to Sweden again from Hungary and uh, Holland. And uh, Strike has made a comeback as well for Slackers. And uh, Sudden Death has been very persistent in coming into Kyrgyzland as well, so that's great, keeping that alive. Um, Ceylon is uh, probably one of the most underestimated people in the Quakel community. He's very humble, and uh, just people don't give him enough credit for what he's doing to the community or doing for the community. So he deserves definitely a big shout out. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Okay, okay else? then if you are happy, um, did you say everything you wanted? Um, yeah, oh well, if people recognize this uh, yeah. nice outfit. Yeah, please um, explain your outfit. It's from a, people might recognize it from a picture, old picture in the Kyrgyzland Galaxen many years ago, uh, which I took with, um, Liga Artis, Dagua, and uh, a lot of other players. It's a famous picture. And it's just been been with me for 15 years. It's a Nike, and I don't know, it's just, it doesn't want to break, even though it looks like raggedy. But I have it with me for every Curious Land, and it brings me luck. So, um, yeah. I guess everybody has something with them for Curious Land, especially those that come every year. So, yeah. <laughs>